Hey everyone, it is the Honey Badger here, and today we're actually going to be doing a, a little kind of a review, you could say, of a few Logitech, uh, what do we call this, the G series, some of their uh, gaming hardware perifs and whatnot. So we're going to actually be looking at those. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little bit of an unboxing. This might be a little bit lengthy to a certain degree. Um, I'll put timestamps of the individual items that I'm going to be looking at. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unbox some of these products and I'm going to try them out for a week and then let you know what I think of them. So first, we're going to look at them and see what they're like and then um, there will be a part two of this video. Um, it'll be all in the same video, but it'll be later on where I'm going to give you my actual input on them. So um, I am really into uh, perifs when it comes to gaming. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know that. Uh, I don't buy tons of new stuff all the time. But I do really enjoy stuff that is either well made, well put together, or works smart, conveniently, or just good. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to cover four different things that I have from Logitech. And they are a keyboard, a headset, a mouse, and a mouse pad. So we will start off with this. This is the Logitech G502 mouse. It has 11 programmable buttons. It has weights for balancing so you can control the weight of it it does many other things as well what else we got it has a three-year limited warranty the dpi can be taken from 200 up to 12,000 dpi my current mouse since it's in front of me does down to 800 and goes up to 8200 so it really outscales that i usually don't sit anywhere near the top end um, my current gear was phoenix stuff because um, I was doing stuff with them originally, but not anymore. So now let's see what Logitech brings to the table. So like I said, here's here's the packaging as well. Flips open, shows the mouse. It's pretty. Um, Logitech does a really good job, I think, with packaging for, uh, well, at least with all their current stuff. Way back in the day, it wasn't as good. Um, but one thing I will say about Logitech stuff is I've always liked is I kind of started with Logitech stuff back in the day. And... Uh, quality of Logitech stuff is really good. Their plastics are damn near indestructible um, to a certain degree. They use really hardcore plastics. I know this. I used to work at GameStop, and when we used to have to do field destroy at the end of the year, and you had to get rid of things that were defective, that always mean they were defective. When you had to get rid of things that were defective, um, Logitech stuff, you're supposed to break it and throw it away, which was everything. But Logitech stuff doesn't break. It was by far the hardest stuff to try to field destroy. So, um, little plant flit important information about your Logitech mouse. Um, but that's fine. Um, the cord, it's the first thing I can see out in the back. It's actually a really high quality uh, weave on it. I don't know if my, my, I don't know if my Logitech <laughs> webcam can pick it up, but we'll see. It's very thick cord. Focus, it's not gonna focus, is it? But it's, it's very thick cord, which is quality-wise good. So now I gotta loop it through this. Hold, which is super fun. That was loud. All right, cool. So we got the mouse. It is out. Oh, those are the. Oh, so that's the ways. Okay, so here's the mouse. Here's how it looks. Um, it does seem pretty. Um, it does seem weighty, which I do like actually. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try it out. We'll see how it works. Um, it's got 11 programmable buttons, which seems like a lot. Um, holding it here doesn't feel too bad though. So far, it does click. Or the backwards button 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 button. That one clicks really weird. Um, it's got a lot of click to it. And then um, here's a little box, which I believe, yes, these have my weights in them, so I can adjust the weight of the said mouse. So um, some people like a lot of weight in their mice, some people don't. So um, my current mouse doesn't have that, and I wish it did. Um, and general weight though feels good. So we'll try this out and we'll let you know what we think of it. Um, this is about an $80 mouse, I believe. So if you're looking for a mouse, it's about that. My current mouse is about 100 bucks. So um, let's see if there's $20 difference in between them. So that's the mouse. We're gonna be trying that one out. Once again, that was the Logitech G502. And that is in about the middle-ish part of the range, I think, for their mice. Um, next, let's jump to the headset, because a lot of people, I'm going in the order in which I think people buy things for their computer. Um, a lot of people really care about mice and headsets, so um, the headset we're going to be taking a look at is the second lowest of their tier. I think they have four, but this is kind of their flagship good one from what I hear. This is the G502. 
430. It's very large and in a very large box, and you get a lot of reflections. And I can't, there we go. It looks like that. This is the packaging. It's fun. It is 7.1 surround sound, which is pretty helpful. It's lightweight design, lets you play comfortably for hours. Um, which, actually, I'm going to be honest, if that is true, I will love it. Um, one thing I don't like about headsets, personally, is if they feel like they're squeezing my brain out. I don't like that. Um, I like them to be somewhat lightweight as well. I have some Astros at work that get too heavy and they feel too clunky as the day goes on. So, uh, And then at home, you guys have probably seen my ones that light up. Those are my Steel Series, uh, Siberia Frost 2s. Um, I do like them. They are comfortable, which is why I have them mostly. The only downfall to the Siberia 2s, I feel, are they... Um, they do start to feel like they they do squeeze your brain after a long period of time, um, but nat naturally when you put them on, you're like, these are very comfortable. The only other big problem about them is the mic quality itself isn't the highest, and then they, uh, I think that's pretty much it, right? Isn't that the only thing wrong with you? They're looking at me like, what did we do to you? They're like, it's the mic, the mic on them is not actually the best quality. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that as much, but if that's something you have to worry about, um, then, you know, because if you, it's your only mic, I have a high quality mic, which I believe right now is what I'm recording from. Um, so, all right, we'll pull this out. If we can pull it out, there it is. All right, so, separate El Plastico. Oh, a little flip tab. Oh, and of course, we have to zip tie things into place because if it was to move, well, that would just be a disaster. How many zip ties are there? So we will uh, zip tie this quick. I can... All right, cool. So pull this apart. Being gentle. Okay. All right, now this cord is blue. First off, we'll pull this out. Little, little transfer, little mic, little headphones, plugs in there. This is the USB dongle. And then the headset itself. It's very blue and black. Lots of little stickies to keep it all fun while it's in the box. Um, the cord is blue. Then about this far down, you do have a little, you can clip it to your shirt if you really wanted to do that. But there's your control with your speaker. It is your mic mute and your volume control. I believe also, if I was to take a step in the dark, nope, can't do it. Okay. And then down here is where it will either plug straight into your PC for microphone and for your headphone, or like I said, you can do it USB, plug it into there. You have USB on the front and you don't have these on the front. I have both, I have choices. So we can do that and then we'll give these a shot and we'll see the mic obviously flips up and then it flips down. You wanna be all sleek and fancy. First impressions, yeah, they do feel light and fairly comfortable. Um, we'll see how those feel over time, sitting on my head and then how the force. And if I look super cool with this, but once again, I don't really need to use a mic because I have a mic, so. Um, but yeah, we'll get to see how these work too. Like I said, these are their 430s. They're in the middle of the range, I would say. Um, a step up from their entry level headset, which is red instead of blue. I'd rather have blue. I like blue more than red. If that's something you just want to know. And yeah, now I also, apart from, apart from my Steel Series, I do have some old school Turtle Beach, whatever these ones are, X12s. And those aren't terrible. Um, I just like how long the cord is on those, really. And that's about as far as it goes. Um, and then next, I'm going to reach. All right, next, we're going to be looking over the G105 gaming keyboard. Does it fit in the screen? Yes, this is it. Um, there's a few things that concern me right away about this, but once again, it's Logitech, and I have used older Logitech keyboards, and there were good things about them I did enjoy. This one out straight out of the box, I will say, is their cheapest one, I do believe. Um, something around, I believe this is around $60, which is pretty reasonable for a keyboard if it is of some decent quality. Um, the only thing that scares me mostly is I don't believe it's a mechanical keyboard, and I like mechanical keyboards. If you don't know the difference, you right now probably don't care or can tell. So that's a good thing for you if that doesn't matter or pertain to you. If you're a mechanical keyboard user such as I am, um, then that might be a bit of an issue. We'll go ahead and pull this out of the box and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, and that's all we need. Packaged lovely in there, very nice. A little bit of foam padding on top of it and then they slip it into a giant 
plastic condom looking thing. Except for nowhere near as protective. And then we'll get the keyboard. Okay, so pull this out. All right, so the keyboard looks a little bit like this. And I can tell by the way I bumped into a key that it is not mechanical. So let's put it down by my mic. Okay, this is me typing on it. All right, make sure I'm not clicking on anything over here. This is me typing on my mechanical. The same weight and everything. See how it's clicky? Mechanical keyboards are fantastic for that. These don't, they don't feel as responsive. Um, doesn't mean they're bad by any means. Mechanicals have drawbacks as well, um, but I like them typically more. This has way more buttons on it and programmable stuff. Also, is it parts of it are backlit? I could be wrong. I have really no idea. Um, I could also just plug it in. Uh, the back of it is very, very red. It does have kick feet, if that's your thing. Um, my current keyboard does not. I also have a Phoenix keyboard. It does not have kick feet. Um, it's the Ator. The only problem about this keyboard, can you read any of what any of that says? They put black on dark gray. So you can't really read any of it. But it does unplug from the top. This does not do that. So, But this is about $100 more than this keyboard. So um, I'm prepared to be slightly disappointed, but I will judge it on it not being a mechanical. Um, so that's what we'll do. So, But I actually am interested to see how this does work. There are some nice buttons on it um, outside of your generic ones because, like I said, my keyboard has no extra ones. So we will be giving this a shot for sure and seeing how it works. Um, it does look nice, though. And once again, plastic-wise, feels feels like solid plastic. So i um, excited about that. So that is the keyboard we will be giving a shot to. And then finally, we're going to be taking a look at this, which is the G4D... 440, 440. And this is the hard gaming mouse pad. And uh, this is a total preference thing for most people on what type of pad they like to use. Um, now, some people don't use mouse pads, which is weird. And then some people like cloth, some people like hard plastic, and some people like uh, hard, this is called hard plastic, right? It's, no, this is just called a hard mouse. Some people like the hard plastic one. So what this mouse is, pad is, it is very large. Uh, I don't know the dimensions. I probably can look down and find them, but I'm lazy. Um, let's put it this way. This is how big my current one is. It's also quite filthy. It's a cloth one. It's also got a black Mesa logo on it. But comparison to size, it's much bigger. So yeah. Um, typically, I'm not a giant fan of them, of hard pads. But I'll give it a shot, like I said, and we'll try all of it out. I might be pleasantly surprised, or I might be like, yeah, personal preference, it's not for me, but I do like the size of it. It's not way, way, way too big, but it's got plenty of space on it. So, um, and this is the final product. So, this was just the unboxing, and these are what we're working with. Um, yeah, I believe this is like 30, the mouse, uh, the keyboard's like 50, I believe. The headphones are like 60, and the same thing in the 60 or 70 for the headphones and the mouse each. So that's your price range. If you're looking for stuff, I think Logitech has made their prices of their products always um, really competitive for the quality they offer. So definitely, a, I'd say that they get a plus just off the bat for that um, after looking around. So um, you could pretty much buy almost all of this stuff for the price of just my mouse and keyboard. So, and yeah, so we'll go with that. And so we'll go to part two now in this video of me reviewing, actually using them. Hey guys, it is the Honey Badger and I am back after actually a little over a week of testing that Logitech gear and it is time for the verdict. And we'll go ahead and start off with the mouse. Oh. All right, so the mouse. After a week of using it, my thoughts. So this is the, the G502 as we did cover earlier. And a few things I did like. Obviously, one nice thing about this mouse, weights and you can put a lot in there, it's very nice. This back cover slips on really easily. It's a magnet actually that holds it in, so it just, it's kind of interesting. It actually has good really flow on a mouse pad as well. And the buttons, there's lots of them, which is very helpful if you really love tons of buttons. I typically don't on my mice. Um, I've never been huge into programming tons, but this has a lot of different settings. And this button right here, when you click it, it then gives second functionality to the other buttons on it. So it's like a shift kind of a deal. At least from what I could see, there's a really cool setup interface that you can use with the mouse. 
and it uh, it does a, it does a good job of letting you really control stuff and kind of fine tune the mouse. Now, the only problems I have with the mouse, besides like the quality feels great, it's got good buttons, it's got good feel of the weight, it's got great cord and everything, and like all that stuff's nice. The big problem I have with it is kind of a personal thing. I have really large hands, and my hand is way too big for this mouse. Like just, it's huge. So what happened actually as I use it is my thumb constantly clicks this button just holding onto the mouse, because I can't, I can't put my hand down here. It's just, so it's, it's a personal thing, it's the way I hold my mice. So I just was always clicking the shift button, which kind of got a little bit annoying. So that's my problem, but I, like I said, I have a huge hand. Like if you measure your hand from, from the base of it to the top, and if you want to wonder if you have a largest hand, my hand's over eight inches from there to there. So like that's big. So like my other mouse doesn't have a button on the side, no button there. I do bump this one occasionally, if you can see right there, but it's, it's just bigger too. So like my hand fits on it. So, um, yeah, just a little bit bigger. It's here, we'll do this if we just see a comparison. So just a little bit wider, bigger, fatter, and chunkier, which is better for my hand, a little less buttons too. So um, that was the big thing that got me. The other thing, which I'm sure I would get used to, but it's just weird, especially when you're used to uh, just a different mouse, is the scroll wheel on it is uh, metal. It feels very like heavy duty. Um, it feels really weighted, but it you spin it and it keeps spinning Like just continuously spinning so when you go to spin around in certain games and stuff like it's still spinning I'll stop it. Okay, so like when you go in a game and, and like that moves the camera or moves through like menus and stuff Stuff just keeps going flying by so it's really weird to get used to it spinning So that was my other little thing other than that the rest of the feel of it feels fine I just wish it was like meant for someone with huge hands like me um, other than that good mouse for the price for sure I believe it's like a 60 to 80 dollar mouse typically is how much this uh, the g502 is um, I don't think it's their very top-of-the-line mouse, but uh, that they sell for the G series for Logitech, but I did like it It is good just those two little things for me mostly because my hands are weird and I'm not used to that. But the rest of it was good. I like the program. It actually, like I said, in your computer, when you go to set it up, there's some really cool things you can do like the tracking and it can like get your perfect tracking down. You can adjust um, on the fly sensitivities that you want really, really well and you can actually get individual tweaks and different settings within them. So there's lots of customizability to it. So that part was really cool. But um, just currently for my hand, just I always kept clicking this button on the side and I was like clicking, clicking and I'd like shift up the, I'd shift mouse button thing and I'd be like, oh, whoops. So I just kept doing that. So other than that, the rest of it was good besides my hands. So uh, probably, probably can't use that for a long time just because I just, my hands are stupid. So the next thing we did talk about though that I think a lot of people will be interested in, I've had a lot of people ask me um, about how I like them actually at work so far are these, they are the Logitech um, the, the G430s, their headset. Now this is their second step up from the bottom. I use that very loosely because these aren't these aren't crap headphones like low tier quality. What I mean by second from the bottom is the ones below these are red and they're 5.1. These are the blues. I think they're 20 bucks more and they're 7.1 surround sound. So um, the main things I was looking for in these was um, comfort, and quality, obviously. That's what I like from, obviously, headphones. Um, starting off, just natural weight, they're not very heavy. At least to me, they're not very heavy. So they can sit on your head for a long time and you don't feel like they're there for, like, they, they don't feel uncomfortable. So weight is a good thing. I hate really heavy headsets. Um, I have Astros at work and they just, they feel super heavy. So uh, maybe I'm crazy, but I don't like my Astros that much for a very expensive headset. These are about one fourth of the price of Astros. Um, the other thing is too, I did microphone tests and the mic quality itself is very, very good. I think it's the best mic quality out of all the headsets I own. That is talking about my Siberias, which I have, a lot of you have seen seen my Siberias. These are my Siberias. Um, these headphones are, I think, about uh, $50 less than these, and they're much better quality. This mic is very bad. Um, and then they are a bit better, and this might surprise people, but um, they're a bit better than these Turtle Beach X12s. Um, the Turtle Beach X12s uh, mic actually isn't terrible, surprisingly. So. 
Um, but these are lightweight, um, fairly comfortable. Um, the mic quality is great. The audio quality is also very fantastic. It's a 7.1, it's very helpful. Um, I think they look all right too for headphones. Not a lot of people care about how their headphones look. I think they look really sleek actually. The design is, I think it's really good. Um, and I like blue, so the color blue is also very helpful. And the other thing, um, now the only one, one slight drawback that I can see, or personally see, and this could be a weird me thing, um, and it's actually, I think it's partially because they're new, is the foam. You can, might be able to hear it a little bit. Um, I think they need, I think it just needs worn in just a tiny bit, um, but that's it. I just, you know, a little, little stiff, not stiff, but just a tiny bit, needs just a little bit, need to be worn a little bit. So um, other than that though, these were fantastic. I like these. I'm gonna probably keep using these on and off with my other headphones because I like switching around because I'm weird. I probably actually take these to work and replace my Astros with them. So um, I like these. These were really, really good. So I definitely recommend these if you're looking for a gaming headset. Um, the G430, good stuff. Now, the next thing we did talk about, let me move these. Also, it has decent cord length. Also helpful, something that my Siberias don't have. Um, now the next thing we t covered would be their, I believe this is their entry level keyboard. It's this one and it is, um, now when we first talked about it, obviously when we just unboxed it, this is the G105 by the way. When we first unboxed it, I said it's not a mechanical, which was the first thing that concerned me. And after using it, the like I missed a mechanical keyboard, but it did a really good job for not being one. And as for like just normal normal keyboard, it it did a good job with what I wanted it to do. Um, it is backlit as well, which is very good at night. It definitely has that over my mechanical because it doesn't do that. Um, so this does that very well. Um, the only thing I didn't like is it's natural resting. Like it's a very flat. Can't see my eyes. It's kind of creepy but it's very flat, and then the feet on it are very narrow. So, um, they're, I mean, they work fine, they're great. I have a slick desk surface, so a um, little slidey on that. But the rest of it was great, the keyboard responded well, it's backlit, it's very good. For the price, if you don't have a gaming keyboard and you're not caring about mechanical, this would be a great place to start, for sure. This is great for that. So, I also very much so recommend this if you need a new keyboard, also very lightweight, and feels very durable. As I talked about previously too, Logitech gear, their plastics are insanely tough. So that's a, just great if you're looking for anything that has some survivability in case you may or may not be abusive. So looking for a good keyboard to start out if you like just using some piece of crap keyboard, something that maybe isn't great or just needs replaced, this is great. It also has a lot of click test rates that they were talking about. So it's durability long-term wise should be great. So for hard for, for gaming continuously, should be good. And then the final thing that I said I may or may not be the least interested in, in was the, the mouse pad, the hardback pad. And I said I liked soft pads and blah, blah, blah. This surprised me. Um, I don't know why, and that might sound weird, but I've been using it nonstop and I'm gonna keep using it. Um, it's actually already replaced my soft pad for now. So. I like it a lot. If you're looking for a nice big solid pad, it doesn't slide around. The grip on it is good on the back, so it doesn't it doesn't um, shift on you too. Um, it's very even surface, and the flow from my mice on it is well, um, it's bent weird, but the flow is really really smooth. I've been actually able to turn down the DPI on my mouse that I use on it because it reacts so well, which is actually really good. I feel like it's gotten more, so I'm more fine tuned when I'm actually in game moving around. So uh, all really positive things from that. I was a little surprised by that. Definitely recommend that if you're looking for a good hard mouse pad. They also sell other versions too. But overall, um, besides the mouse just being too small for my hand, that weird thing, that was probably my least favorite, but everything else was fine. It was really good stuff. Um, all the prices, as I mentioned, for all of these are cheaper than all my current stuff and performed very closely to that, if not better than some of my more expensive stuff I have on my other PC setup at work. So, um, yeah, it, it was very good quality um, products. I obviously would not honestly expect much less than that from Logitech. They do make high quality gear. So if you're looking for some uh, good gear, if you need to replace something, just about everything I reviewed, I would definitely recommend to a friend. Um, it, like I said, the, the, the mouse comes down to just personal preference. Everybody's got a little weird niche on that uh, or deal or whatever. The clicky thing on the side, I just kept clicking that button. So that's just annoying because my hands are huge. 
Then second, the headphones were great. Like if you need some great headphones that aren't overly priced, because a lot of headphones are getting crazy expensive, these are well priced for the quality, the fit, the feel, the mic, just the speakers, everything, great. Totally recommend that. The keyboard, if you need a, a new keyboard, if you never had a gaming keyboard, um, totally great. If you're already on a mechanical keyboard and you like mechanical, obviously that's probably just what, you, what you're gonna stick with. But uh, if you just like a, a good new keyboard, then that would be a great one to get. And then the pad is great, I love it. So it's I'm gonna keep using it um, and the flow on it's perfect. So like I said, it's allowed me to change the sensitivity and the DPI on my, on my mouse. So that's been great, I really liked everything. Um, really solid stuff. So if you have any questions about any of it, um, let me know in the comments about what you want to know or what you might think or whatever. Um, I do like doing product reviews when I get them. I think actually another one might be coming up in the next week or two or so. Uh, somebody else asked me to take a look at some of their product and um, perhaps some giveaway type stuff with these or with future products. So if you guys like this stuff, that's great. And we'll do some giveaways because we'll have products. So that'll be great. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, but until next time, just have a great day. I'll see all you guys later.